This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. Remember 1939 is the year when peace efforts came to naught, but not all of them failed. Good relations followed the visit of Mr. Chamberlain to Rome, but also in Italy there befell an event which takes no account of peace or war. Death laid its finger upon the Vatican. Pope Pius XI was succeeded by Pope Pius XII. News at home started with the King George V. That was the name given by the present king to the first battleship built for the Royal Navy since 1925. A new symbol of stronger Britain. In Europe there was still war, but Spain was nearing the end of her tragic upheaval. Barcelona fell, and the victorious troops of General Franco marched into Madrid after two and a half gallant years. China, too, was racked with the torture of battle. Japanese bombs rained upon the towns and villages in a fury of destruction. of an invading German army once again awoke the echoes in Europe. This despite the promises given to Mr. Chamberlain and the world at Munich. We know now the real intentions of Hitler and the Nazi fanatics. Britain must be prepared. The London visit of Monsieur Le Brun served a double purpose. It showed us the likable qualities of the First Lady and Gentlemen of France, and it showed the world in general how firm were the ties of our friendship. Meanwhile, Britain pursued the peacetime course, the Grand National. The winner was Workman, written by T. Hyde. Yes, another slice of Europe fell into the grasping hands of the German Führer. And at Easter the world received another shock. Italy invaded Albania, achieving an almost bloodless conquest. But tragedy stalked along the avenues of peace. The giant French liner SS Paris was ravaged by mysterious fire. 34,000 tons of proud ship and a priceless cargo. In 40 minutes, a wreck. The German fleet came out for exercise in the channel. Daily the international situation grew worse, and Parliament passed the bill for compulsory service, a step without parallel for this country in peacetime. But willingly the young men answered the demands laid upon them. Crowds joined up, but crowds were not to be diverted from their customary sport. Nearly a hundred thousand in Wembley Stadium saw Portsmouth beat Wolverhampton in the cup final. Portsmouth won by four goals to one, and the King presented the cup. Discussions for a journey were underway. We were soon to lose our king and queen when they sailed for the tour of Canada and the United States. And what a triumphal tour that was. Do you remember what they said about it in America? In the persons of George and Elizabeth, the British have captured Washington again. And Washington loves it. While the King and Queen were away, they heard distressing news. Queen Mary had been involved in a car accident. But Her Majesty's great constitution brought her quickly back to health and public duties. The Derby. And the winner is Lord Rosebery's Blue Peter, ridden by E. Smith. <laughs> Open Golf Championship, won by British champion Dick Burton. Sidney Woodison lost the mile of the century in New Jersey in a spectacular incident. 
Hemmed in by the American rideout, he stumbled and lost the race. Was it a foul? Then America's biggest and most breathless thrill, Indianapolis. But once again, the violence of the political world intervened and took the center of the stage. Blockade in Tianjin. Japan beat China still dragged on. Chongqing in flames. Dancing. Hitler has no more territorial claims in Europe. Ribbentrop flew to Moscow. The Nazis and the Bolsheviks Sworn ideological foes became uneasy partners in a business whose aim was thunder in Poland. Warships battered Gdynia. Britain and France had promised that if Poland were invaded, they would take up arms against the Nazi bully. This age of aggression must be ended and Britain prepared to keep her word. Children were evacuated from cities in the danger zone, but up to the very last, we worked for peace. We failed, and on Sunday, September the 3rd, 1939, Britain declared that a state of war existed between her and Nazi Germany. Almost immediately, the air raid sirens howled their warning, but it was false alarm. Germany in the Siegfried Line, France in her Maginot Line. The war had scarcely begun when German U-boats repeated the frightfulness of the old world war. The liner Athena was torpedoed. Women and children lost their lives, and many of the passengers were American neutrals. <laughs> Meanwhile, the British Expeditionary Force was on its way to France. Heavy losses early in the war at sea, the aircraft carrier Courageous and the Royal Oak. America's Congress passed the Neutrality Bill. The lifting of the arms embargo meant material aid for the Allies. In other neutral countries, King Leopold and Queen Wilhelmina pleaded for peace. Scandinavia too, three kings and a president met at the Stockholm Conference. The president was Cario of Finland. The lust for power had spread from Nazi Germany to her partner in Russia. Stalin sent bombers to rain death upon the Finnish capital, Helsinki. See, the struggle went on. The armed merchantman Royal Pindy had no chance against the pocket battleship Deutschland. But revenge was to come quickly. The Graf's Bay met her doom at Montevideo after the meeting with three British cruisers. The war goes on, but our cause is just, and we shall surely win. Oh!